I've helped thousands of people learn lookup formulas over the years, and one of the most common questions is on two-way lookups. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how to do a two-way X lookup to retrieve values from a ray table. We'll cover everything from basic to advanced techniques, and I've also included a challenge to help you practice. So I'll make the Excel file that I use available for free download. Now let's get to it. So in this first example, we have this list of employees here, and we need to look up their commission rates in this rate table over here. And that's gonna be based on their plan, which is in the header row here of the table, and also based on their team, which is in this first column. And we're going to use a two-way XLOOKUP for this, or what's sometimes referred to as a double XLOOKUP. So we're gonna type equals XLOOKUP, we'll tab into that. The first XLOOKUP we're going to do is for the rows, or for the team here. So we want to look up this team, that'll be our lookup value, type a comma. And then for the lookup array, we're gonna look in this column here for the team name. We're gonna hit F4 on the keyboard to anchor that, so when we copy it down, it uh, remains there, comma. The return array is where things get tricky because we actually want to, in this case, return uh, one of the values from this column here, but when we copy the formula down for the next cell down here, we wanna return a value from this column. So for this, we're going to use another X lookup, and I'm gonna explain it in a separate cell here. So I'm just gonna kind of pause or save this formula. I'm gonna put an apostrophe in front of it, hit enter, and then we'll just save the text here in the cell. I'll go to this cell over here, type equals X lookup. So we're gonna use another X lookup. In this case, the lookup value will be the plan name, type a comma. The lookup array is going to be this row right here with all of the plan names. Hit F4 on the keyboard, comma, and then the return array, we're actually gonna select all the values here in the table. So instead of one single row or one single column, we can select a range like this, a two-dimensional range. I'll just hit F4 again, and we'll hit Enter. And what that's going to do is it's going to look up again this plan value in this uh, row right here, and then return the entire column because we're basing it on that 2D array. So we have the entire column returned right here. And this is what we're gonna feed into the return array argument for our first X lookup. So go ahead and delete this and we'll just rewrite it in the first X lookup. So I'll delete the apostrophe now, we'll continue editing this formula. Again, here we're gonna do X lookup, we'll tab into that. The lookup value will be the uh, plan name, comma. Again, the lookup array is going to be this header row here, F4 on the keyboard, comma, and then the return array will be the entire range here, F4 on the keyboard there, close the parentheses on that second X lookup, close the parentheses on the first X lookup and hit enter, and we will get the return rate of 9%. And again, that's for team A and the platinum plan. And then we can copy the formula down, we'll just double click the fill handle to copy it down, and we can see that we get all of our results. Now it's always good to spot check these. Sometimes I just like to go to the bottom to make sure when we copied that we have all the formulas uh, referenced and anchored correctly in all the cells. So here, team D gold plan, we can go here, team D gold plan is 10%, and our formula is returning the correct result. Next, we'll take a look at air handling with the two-way X lookup. So let's say that Michael decides to change his team to team one instead of team A. Of course, team one doesn't exist over here, so that's going to return an error. And we can handle this error. And we're gonna do that in the first X lookup here because this X lookup is looking up the team in the uh, column over here, the team column. So for that, out at the end of that X lookup, I'm gonna type a comma, and we're gonna specify the if not found argument. And here in quotes, I'm just gonna type uh, team NF, which stands for not found, close the quotes and hit enter. And that's gonna of course return our error message. Now if Michael decides to also change his plan name instead of uh, platinum, we'll change it to diamond, this is again going to return a different error. And this error is happening because this X lookup for the return array can't find the plan in the header row over here. Now we can't actually use this if not found argument here within this X lookup. And that's because if it did return that error, it would return that error message essentially to the other XLOOKUP and XLOOKUP wouldn't be able to find that. So instead, when we have an error for the header row uh, lookup, we can do that with if error. So at the beginning here, I'm gonna uh, use if error, we'll tab into that. The value, if it's not an error, will just be our regular XLOOKUP formula. And then out at the end here, we'll type a comma, and then the value, if it is an error, in this case, we'll say plan F for plan not found close the parentheses on if error, hit enter, and now we get that error message. 
And the nice part about this setup is that it allows us to handle errors for both the row lookup and the column lookup separately to give us that detailed information. So if we were to change this back to platinum here, I'll just copy and paste it. You can now see that we're getting the error for the team lookup, which is the row lookup. And one little pro tip here, I wrote the error messages in all caps to just make them stand out in the column. If you have a column that contains all caps or something else, of course you could change the error message to whatever you like. One other thing you can do is just add some characters like dashes at the beginning of it to again, just make it stand out so you know that this formula is returning an error. Oh, and of course, we'll also need to copy this formula down. Just double click the fill handle and in the next section on tables, we won't have to do that step. So Excel has received a lot of updates over the last few years with new functions, dynamic array formulas, and spill ranges. If you're feeling a bit behind or uncertain about all these changes, we have an online course called Modern Formulas that will help you learn all the new functionality. You will learn how to analyze data efficiently and how to make your Excel files easier for your boss and coworkers to use. I'll put a link in the description where you can learn more about the course and we'll also include a special discount just for our YouTube subscribers. Now let's get back to the video. Next, we'll look at how to write the formula with Excel tables. So I have the same data here, but both my commission rate table and my employee list are in Excel tables. And of course you can insert Excel tables by going to the insert tab and choosing table. I have a separate video that explains this in more detail. I'll link that up in the description below. So our formula is really gonna be the same with one minor caveat. So we'll start typing X look up here, we'll tab into that. Again, the lookup value will start with the team or the row, we'll type a comma there. The lookup array will just be this column of values in our table, type a comma. Now for the return array, again, this is where we want our X lookup. So we're gonna start typing X lookup here, we'll tab into that. Our lookup value is going to be the plan, type a comma. Now for the lookup array, typically we just select these cells here. But what I'm actually gonna do is select the entire header row of the table. So all of these cells there, when I do that, it creates this reference, pound headers. So again, that's gonna include all of the cells in the header row. And this will reduce our formula maintenance, which I'll explain in just a second. So I'm gonna type a comma here for our return array. Again, and just instead of just doing this range here, I'm gonna do the entire table. That makes reference to the entire table. For now, I won't add any error handling, so we'll just close the parentheses on that one, close the parentheses again, hit enter, and that's gonna return our results. And it also automatically copies the formula down because I am using an Excel table. And what I meant by reducing formula maintenance is if we add rows or columns to our table, so let's just say we have a new diamond plan out here, that's gonna be automatically be added to our table, and we'll just put in a value right here. If we were to change this now, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to diamond, our formula is going to return the correct result. It's automatically going to include any new rows or columns, and that's because for this X lookup here, I specified the entire header row and the entire table. So that's just a little trick that'll make life a bit easier. And you also don't have to worry about XLOOKUP looking up a value uh, before your actual rates start because there cannot be any duplicate values in the header row. Now we'll look at a bit more of an advanced example. So instead of plans, we now have sales amounts. And across the top here in our rate table, we have these ranges of sales values. And we need to do a lookup on these. For this, I have a hidden row here where we're going to have the tier minimum for each of these ranges. So between zero and 20, we're just gonna put zero dollars. Between 20,000 and 50,000, we'll put 20,000 and so on. And we're gonna use this for our lookup. So again, we'll start typing X lookup here, tab into that. Our first lookup will still be the team for the row. So I'll type a comma there and select the uh, row of teams here. F4 to make that absolute, comma. For our return array, we're going to use XLOOKUP. We'll tab into that. Our lookup value is going to be the sales amount, so we'll select that, comma. And then the lookup array is going to be this uh, row right here with these values. F4 to make that an absolute reference, comma. And then our return array is again going to be all of these cells here in the table, again F4. And now we're going to use match mode. So I'm gonna type a comma twice for XLOOKUP's match mode argument. 
And here we're going to use this one, exact match or next smaller item. And what this is going to do, it's going to look up this value, so 98,000, it's going to look it up in this row right here. If it finds an exact match, it will return that column. If it doesn't, it's going to go to the next smaller item, which in this case is 50,000. You can also think of this as previous item. The reason it's next smaller is because these values actually don't have to be in order, which is pretty cool, but they are in order here. So with this, we're gonna say negative one. You can just double click here, type negative one for match mode. We'll close the parentheses on that XLOOKUP, close the parentheses again and hit enter, and that's going to return the result. And then since we're not using an Excel table, double click the fill handle to copy down. Now you might be wondering what the difference is between this two-way XLOOKUP and index match. And really there are three things to consider. On this sheet here, I have the same XLOOKUP formula. I also have an index match formula. Now, of course, these are gonna return these same results. Index match just calculates a little bit differently, and then it uses match or X match to look up and return the row and column numbers, and it feeds those to the array. So it's feeding coordinates into this array table to return a value. Now, that means the index match requires three functions, where XLOOKUP only requires two, and XLOOKUP might be a bit easier to write. The other factor is error handling. As we saw with XLOOKUP, we can handle errors for both the row and columns. With index match, we don't have that granularity, and we can just wrap it in if error to handle all errors. And the third factor is performance. Here I'm doing a test on 50,000 rows of both formulas, and they both calculate at about the same amount of time. XLOOKUP tends to win out slightly over index match, but the difference is very small, and they both calculate in under a tenth of a second, again for 50,000 formulas. So I think this decision really comes down to personal preference. I do have a separate video on index match, and I'll link that up in the description below. And I have a challenge for you. On this challenge sheet, I have several examples of data and tables that you might use for two-way lookups. And over here in column J, I've left this blank, so your challenge is to write the XLOOKUP formulas that will return the correct result in each of these scenarios. And this one for shipping costs might require a little additional setup. But that's the only hint I'm gonna give, and all of the techniques you learned in this video should allow you to figure this out. And again, I'll make this file available for free download and put a link to that in the description below. Now this formula can be tricky at first, so I encourage you to use the challenge to practice and leave a comment below letting us know what you'll be using this technique for. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to get notified when we publish our next tutorial. And if you wanna learn even more Excel formulas, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.